Praise the Lord. Good morning and good evening, my dear brothers and sisters. God bless you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It's again a pleasure to meet you in this continuous series of what we had been discussing for several sessions now. In fact, if these kind of sessions have to be given in the church, it would have been a series that is yeah, 13 weeks old. Yeah, we had been discussing on this for the last two and a half months. That's how it must be portrayed. Yeah, so we started this series uh, with an intention of understanding how the invisible enemy is and what kind of methods, techniques, and what kind of stature he possesses and what kind of powers he have or he might possess or he might be having. Uh, for some reasons, Christendom had been preaching always that yeah, Satan is right under your feet. He had been crushed. His head had been crushed and right under your feet. And do not worry. Blood of Jesus is there. The throne room of grace is there. And Holy Spirit is there. His companionship, his fellowship is there. He is our helper. Everything that I have told you just now is definitely the truth. We are not against it. But we are missing an important fact that Satan is powerful too. He has powers to tempt us. He has powers to push us aside. He has powers to go and complain about us and win that argument. If at all there is no righteousness in us, he can win that argument and he can punish us. God will permit him. We had been discussing all of these during the past 13 sessions. And we discussed in detail where what was the reason uh, towards this evolution of evil spirits demonic forces um, and how they are being used in a very consolidated manner of um, in, in the name of black magics, witchcrafts and the witch doctors and all of this you will be seeing in the uh, televisions. In fact, they are even advertising in the televisions. You, you need to uh, you, you need a consultant for black magic or witch, doc, witch doctor. Please come and contact us. They give that uh, consultancy office number and all that and it's become like a business it's officially recognized business because i know just before the elections comes or any kind of important events happens even in businesses uh, the shortcuts that people take today um, yeah surprisingly there are certain believers who also take that path these days and don't be surprised we spoke about king saul in one of our tamil uh, uh, biblical series and uh, where how we went and ended up consulting a medium a spiritist and he want to uh, speak to the spirit of uh, prophet samuel so don't be surprised all these things happens but you know what the end result is death spiritual death first and then the physical death and then eternally you will be thrown into the lake of fire about which also we discussed, we had given you the sneak peek. But for significant amount of time, we had been talking through this invisible enemy. We had been explaining what kind of, with what kind of powers, with what kind of techniques and methods, he will come to war against the people of God. And we had, we had spent several sessions only on that. But for the past few sessions, we had been dealing with overcoming the powers of darkness is, because Bible never alone talks about the problem, but it gives you the promising solution. It is the book of, it is a, our, our God is the solution provider, right? It's a book of solution. It's a book of life, how we can overcome. And Bible says in Revelation, that book of Revelation, that overcomers will find their way into the kingdom of heaven. They will march in style into the kingdom of heaven. Because Jesus says, as how I have overcome this world, you will also overcome. As how I had been perfect, God the Father says, you will also be perfect. Matthew chapter 5 verse 48 and John chapter 16 verse 33. And if you read these verses, you will understand. That's not the nature of God to accept defeat. The nature of God is not to embrace failure. Yeah, it's okay, brother. It happened this time. Let's see next time. There is no next time business in the dictionary of God the Father. It's always... 2 Corinthians 1.20, yes and amen, his words are powerful. Proverbs chapter 18 verse 21 says, the death and life are in the power of our tongue. The words that proceed from our mouth, in Tamil it comes very well. Jeevanam 
மரணமும் நாவின் அதிகாரத்தில் உள்ளன மீனிங் த கமேண்ட் தட் ப்ரொசீட்ஸ் ஃப்ரம் த ஃப்ரம் யுவர் மவுத் மேத்யூ சாப்டர் ஃபோர் வர்ஸ் ஃபோர் மேன் ஜஸ்ட் நாட் லிவ் பை பிரெட் அலோன் பட் பை த வேர்ட் தட் ப்ரொசீட்ஸ் ஃப்ரம் த மவுத் ஆஃப் காட் வாட் ப்ரொசீட்ஸ் அவுட் ஆஃப் யுவர் மவுத் டிட்டர்மைன்ஸ் வெதர் யூ ஆர் கோயிங் டு பி த ஓவர் கமர் ஆர் யூ ஆர் வாக்கிங் இன் த ஆர் மார்ச்சிங் அ ஹெட் இன் த பாத் ஆஃப் ஓவர் கமிங் தீஸ் பவர்ஸ் ஆஃப் டார்க்னஸஸ் ஹவு மச் அவர் ஹெவியர் தேர் பவர்ஸ் ஆர் கோயிங் டு பி ஹவு மச் அவர் பிகர் தேர் you know techniques are going to be doesn't matter because 1 john chapter 4 verse 4 says that greater is he within us than that is in this world and bible had given us all sorts of guarantee warranty assurance promises that you are definitely the overcomers and there is no two ways about it yes and there is no dead end yes and you will be marching forward and any obstacles that comes on your way the angels are deployed in that place to safeguard you psalm 91 if you can read angels will come descending into your territories and they will ensure your foot doesn't hit against a stone stone means obstacles which are brought to you by the devil in the form of sickness confusion reflections fights quarrels struggles and what not but amidst of all of this bible promises or bible proclaims the good news you are merely the overcomers okay and we had been talking through this overcoming the powers of darkness is through prayers we had been discussing the ephesians chapter first uh, first chapter and few verses we discussed in, in the previous session we discussed how do we overcome through the mysteries of god that are instilled in us god talks to us the mysteries the secrets he reveals which the devil cannot understand and we had a very detailed discussion about using those powers of god using that gift of god and how do we fight that battle you may want to go through chapter 12 and 13 just to get that kind of sneak peek on what we are going to discuss today in continuation towards the title which we had entitled as overcoming the powers of darkness as it it's just as much as it is important that you understood the devil is powerful it is also very important for you and me to understand the powers of darknesses are absolutely nothing before the supernatural powers of god before the supernatural presence of god before the gifts of the holy spirit the fruits of the holy spirit and the angels that are deployed at our rescue they come to rescue us they deliver us as it is written in the bible during the time of the trouble call unto me i will honor your prayers i will deliver you and i will show you the life of salvation yes these are the promises which must be reminded or which must come on the top of our mind if you are a believer and this is why you need to you need to engage yourself in meditating on the scriptural verses and work closely with the holy spirit who is your partner lifetime partner we are married to holy spirit he is our companion and he lives inside of us the olden days the spirit of god comes descends upon the prophets and the chosen vessels like elijah like samuel and all of these people and samson and they you know tear their enemies into pieces or they prophesy or they lead the, uh, uh, the tribe of israel but in the new testament each one of us can you believe what a privilege blood of jesus have got for us he purchased us for a price what does it mean he wants to take us to the next level the realm of en- having that encounter with the presence of god every single day every single moment there are times where the spirit of god would descend upon these prophets and prophetesses in the old testament and they got to wait for that moment but you don't have to wait for anything at all in this new testament and that's the biggest privilege that we have as brethren and sisters to our lord jesus he is our elder, elder brother he has taken the seat on the right side of his father in heaven as our intercessor interceding for our needs until the second coming he will play that role but after the second coming he is going to be honored as that one god the messiah the lord of king lord of lords and king of kings the lamb of god and all the 24 elders will just remove their crowns and throw it on his feet and they will bow down and worship him and we will also be there okay now in this session we are going to discuss about 
the in continuation of overcoming the powers of darkness is the method that we are going to learn today is overcoming the powers of darkness is through the armor of god through the armor of god all right now we always go slow in teaching bible or preaching bible why because bible will have to be read real slow absolutely slow okay and yeah these days these days there are a lot of road rages right and you know what when, when the road rage happens when the other guy is not giving you the uh, room or what the space to overtake when the other guy in front of you is driving absolutely slow you get irritated you honk and the guy stares and then you go to the side and you start fighting like dogs this is how the road rage starts yeah that's what the statistic says but you know what that principle is much needed driving slow drive your vehicle absolutely slow at the speed of maybe one kilometer per hour <laughs> can you believe you don't have to rush 200 kilometers per hour some people i read the bible in a month's time what did you understand brother actually nothing i'm reading it for the second time what did you understand brother actually nothing i'm reading it for the third time some people have read it for 30 times <laughs> but what did they gain out of it actually nothing it's only a matter of numbers quantifying your relationship with god doesn't matter but qualitatively how have you improved walking in your spiritual life fighting against the powers of darkness is as a veteran as how jesus fought against the powers of darknesses they could never overcome him and that's why hebrews 2:18 had been written that there was no blemish in him he died as the lamb without sin 1 peter 3:18 he died 1 peter 1:18 sorry he died as a lamb without sin and that's why you and i have the, uh, the 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 concept called this grace of god the concept called this cleansing touch of god through the blood of jesus we are washed and we are pronounced as righteous children of god how it doesn't come for free but it costs so much for jesus to fight against the powers of darknesses in style and he walked victoriously all the time why because he was absolutely slow in his spiritual walk steady in his spiritual work 30 years he took his time to meditate upon the scriptures some of the uh, historians say that from the age of five five and a half he had the habit of going to the synagogue and that is why at the age of 12 he was able to challenge the scholars many people are misinterpreting this yeah anyway he was the son of god he had been given the supernatural powers it's the biggest lie of the devil he never had any supernatural powers he obtained the supernatural powers through the efforts of seeking god through the efforts of meditation through the efforts of talking to god living his life without blemish overcoming those temptations and that's where god poured upon his spirit poured the spirit upon the lord jesus and he was strengthened with those gifts and fruits and that's why bible says that you can become perfect just like how i become perfect and jesus said yeah look at me and more than me you can do things and that's why you saw so many miracles being done by you know james paul peter john uh, but jesus never performed any of that aprons have fallen on people people touched the hand keys they got healed shadow fallen over uh, the people and they were risen to life so many miracles happened many of them were not even recorded in the new testament why because those days as i told you it was written upon the animal skin and the ink was costly animal skin was costly therefore they recorded some of the uh, important events which is which is helpful there are so many things they did anyway let's come back to the point turn your bibles with me to ephesians chapter 6 and today's meditation will be from chapter 6 ephesians verses 10 onwards all the way to 20 we will be meditating upon this and we will be researching we will be studying we will be preaching we will be teaching you call you name anything i look at it uh, the way uh, the way how i look at things is like it's a discussion in the presence of god it's a meditation getting into the details slicing and dicing getting into the details and we meditate it together all right the title of this topic is the whole armor of god put on the armor of god all right verse 10 says this finally my brethren be strong in the lord and in the power of his 
might. When it says be strong in the Lord, you might have heard this uh, from people, you know, encouraging the other person who is in a sick bed or counting his um, hours or time. The doctor would have stipulated certain time frame saying that, yeah, 48 hours he's gone if he doesn't recover. And what the, the other person sitting next to him, maybe a close, maybe the closest family member, encouraging all the time saying, hey, stay strong, stay strong, stay strong. In, in US especially, you can see this, stay strong. What this means is, there is no need for you to stay strong in the Lord when all is well. That's the reason I gave that example. You understand? <laughs> there is no need for a muscle man to stay strong, stay strong because he's already a muscle man. He had gone through this kind of uh, nutritional food and exercises and um, yeah, he had he'd been have into a disciplined life of watching out the diet and whatnot. And the person is already strong and he doesn't have to make any effort except that he will have to consistently move on with his diet. That's the only thing he will have to do. But who needs this versus those who are on the weak side, a thin, skinny fellow uh, who would want to build muscles like this giant fellow who is seven foot tall will definitely need this. Or in the other words, practical tense, if you have to convert this, you need to stay strong when you are walking in the middle of this world because 1 Peter chapter, um, I'll give you the exact quotes. We all know this, the Satan is like the prowling lion. Chap 1 Peter chapter 5 verse um, 8, be sober, be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Resist him steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. And James chapter uh, 4 verse 7 says that, resist the devil and he will flee away from me. Brother, what is the connection between stay strong and what the verses you're quoting? That is a strong connection, brother. I think you haven't understood it enough. All that we are saying is, while you walk on this earth, you need to stay strong in your faith. You need to stay strong in your resistance against the powers of darknesses, against the devil, who is ready enough all the time to devour you. He will be watching out so auspiciously, so cautiously, so eagerly, I would say. That's the right word. When you would fall as a prey into his hands. Just like if you had been watching Animal Planet and Discovery Channels and all that. Before it goes for hunting, the cheetah or you know the tigers or any, any, any animal you take, the wild animals, they will hide right under the grass or right under the herbs. And they'll be watching the movements of the domestic animals like deers and uh, you know all the bulls and you know sheep and all that and, and, and when they feel that they are confident to take that speed because they have that calculating capacity this much is the distance and my speed is this much and am i confident the moment it is confident it will be you know springing upon <laughs> the prey with such a speed and the prey would not notice because it's busy chewing eating that's exactly the example what we are trying to portray here we are busy in this world chewing many things beloved many things at the workplace many things in the family many things um, you know building houses and buying cars and riding the cars and what not it's as good as like that domestic animal busy in chewing things but Always remember this, somebody is watching you. One is definitely our father who neither slumbers nor sleeps. He watches you through your going out and coming in. Psalm 121, 7, 8 and 9, you can take and read. And our intercessor remembers us and he intercedes for our needs. Our elder brother, Jesus Christ. And Romans 8, 26 says, with a groaning spirit all the time, the Holy Spirit prays for our needs. But on the other hand, there is also another person who is also watching you to devour you. And that's why we read that verse, 1 Peter 5, 8 and 9, right? And that's devil. And those are the demonic forces. And those are the powers of darknesses against which we need to fight the good fight of faith. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 12. Fight the good fight of faith. 
and for that you need to stay strong you need to stay consistent you need to stay focused and you need to always watch out there are some animals um, especially giraffe i love that animal it's so tall it, <laughs> there is no way this, this these animals can hide but still sometimes they also fall as prey right because they are at such a height they can easily watch nobody can hide such should be our stature and appearance before our enemies we should be tall in our spiritual life just like this animal is right no way he, this guy can hide no way he can come from behind no way he can hide under the bushes yeah you're going to spot it spot on come out why because you are strong that's how jesus walked his life that's how jesus lived his life he was always strong and he said that yeah in that day i will say that satan will come and i have nothing to do with you can you and i say that boldly loudly clearly satan come here i have nothing to do with you are you examining your life are you introspecting who you are are you cleansing purifying your spirit mind body soul james chapter 4 verse 8 purify and cleanse your spirits are you confessing enough to obtain the mercies of god proverbs 28:13 these were the things which jesus had been practicing or he was positioning his hope and confessions and upon these promises of god and that's why the devil couldn't near him or maybe it's not about devil nearing him devil is always in this world right he is the ruler of this world and job chapter 1 you can say uh, when the sons of men uh, came um they along with them with them uh, you know the devil also came and the lord asked him hey where are you coming he said back and forth to and fro i'm moving across all the dimensions of the world he will be moving around and that's why we read that verse to devour to devour the prey <laughs> and it's not easy to escape from him it's not very simple to become like the tall giraffe it's not easy there is just one giraffe which is the tallest animal yeah after dinosaur many years ago the di dinosaur animal used to live maybe in the different generations yeah one of the bone is almost like 1 million years old probably when satan and his host were living on this earth and eden garden was his headquarters maybe at that point of time these animals could have existed we have described that from ezekiel 28 uh, in our first and second classes okay and there are a lot of archaeological evidences deep buried deep down and some of them are left like that for our own understanding although it's beyond our understanding beyond our imagination god left certain evidences here and there why because you need to understand <laughs> what you have understood is absolutely nothing that's why jesus said if you're not able to bear about the things that i speak of this world how is that you are going to bear when i speak about the things of heavens and heavenlies that's why jesus kept it always little simple and straight and these are the spiritual matters why we want to get involved and deal with this therefore you grow stronger you grow stronger you get grounded and rooted in the love and faith of god which we had been discussing in a previous session ephesians chapter 3 yeah verse 17 you can take and read offline Do you understand are you with me being strong in the lord means it's not about building muscles some people go for that um what is it they gather the gang of people some 2000 christians they went for a kind of a marching parade all the way to the governor's palace and they would be submitting a petition hey this is against us i'm not against such things but what after that the same 2000 people will make their way to an auditorium and they sit and pray for the whole day that they should find favor in the eyes of governor or prime minister they don't they return homes they eat and they sleep nothing is going to happen that's not about being strong in the lord being strong in the lord is about resisting the devil that he may flee away from us not once not twice every single moment that we live on this planet earth we need to walk in the resistance we need to walk in the mode of alert always think there is an alarm ringing right at the top of your head why because he's at work he's at work as much as the holy spirit is at work his fellowship with us is all the time 24 by 7 all 365 days he's not at rest he's not at rest he neither slumbers nor sleeps 
as much as he is doing that, the devil is also not at rest. Why? Because he is well aware that the time stipulated for him or the time given to him is very short. It's very limited. And the second coming may happen anytime. The rapture may happen anytime. The world can be judged by the Lord anytime. The white throne can be brought and placed right in front. Yeah. And His Excellence, the Lord, the Father Almighty will come and, you know, be, He will be made to sit. And he will be judging the whole world. The book of life will be opened be before the rich and poor, the big and small and the greater and the small, right? And that day can come and it can happen anytime to you and me. And the devil is well aware. The sad truth here is more than you and I being, the, being created in the image of God, being cautious. We, we must have been cautious about these things. The Satan is much more cautious than you and me. Don't you think he read the Bible better than us? Don't you think he understood the mysteries of God better than us? Don't you think he understand the concepts of revelation better than us? Then why is that you people are ill-treating him? Is what he would come and question whenever you resist. That's why he asked, right? I know Paul, I know Jesus. And who are you? When you resist the devil, watch out brothers and sisters. You need to deserve to, you know, push him aside. And that's where we have... Be, be, I mean, the Holy Spirit is not allowing me to move forward. I'm stuck with this word called as be strong in the Lord. And I can go on and on with various examples, right? Take the example of Apostle Paul. He thought he was strong in the Lord. He was the gold medalist in the university run by uh, Gamaliel, one of the biggest theological Bible uh, college. And he was the gold medalist there. He was the topper. And he was from one of the rich and prominent family he was estimated to be having 5,000 crores of Indian rupees at that point of time. By this time, he would be having half the India belongs to him. Right? Or one-fourth of United States of America belongs to him. He was from the prominent family, from the business. He was a businessman. And he was so strong in scriptural um, uh, knowledge. And he conducted his life according to the commandments of God. That's what, you know, Paul would be referring I was the Jew and I walked according to the commandments of God, which means he was so sure that he didn't violate any of the commandments. And he took that boast upon that law and upon his conduct. And he assumed that he was the strong, strongest person in the Lord. And in a moment of time, God proved that, no, he is the feeble of the feeblest. And you know what? Interestingly, Paul himself wrote that. I am less of the least and low of the lowest. What made him to write? What broke that Paul, that strong Paul, whom he thought he was strong, what broke? Because he misunderstood something. He misunderstood something. He did not focus on the life of salvation. He did not think about the life after death. He did not focus much about the powers of darknesses that are at work and that can deviate even strongest people like Paul. He was Saul and he became Paul. God renames always. When you are redeemed and delivered, God always renames and he ensures that you are taken by his side and you are hidden under the shadow of his wings. And that's what has happened to Paul, right? He was taken as uh, God came at his rescue because he saw that the person is absolutely focused on something that he's not supposed to be focused. So in order to defocus him and get him that the focus shifted to the right uh, side or the right image, God will have to blind his eyes. And three days, you know, Paul was blind, sitting there, not eating or drinking. What do you think he was doing? What do you think? I'll tell you what he was doing. This is my own imagination, which Bible never described either. He would have thought through all the stupid mistakes and foolishness of misinterpreting the scriptures and understanding it incorrectly or misapprehending the whole meaning of and he understood that jesus is the lord many people don't have that understanding they think that is the right thing and they say they already say oh i am already strong in the lord because i go to church i fast and pray i read bible one hour i meditate i do this that like the pharisee the spirit of pharisee we have done a very beautiful tamil series we have spoken about the spirit of pharisees you will have to listen to it whoever knew tamil language please go and stay tuned to that right and 
the 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 entitlement of the biblical series was kadina irudayam padaitha makkal okay and we spoke about that the spirit of pharisee is nothing but always boasting in oneself your boast should be in the lord bible says boasting in oneself thinking that they are the strongest but they aren't they are the feeblest and it's easy for devil to devour in fact you are not their targets why you are already on his side <laughs> yeah we always used to give that example right when the bus is heading towards the destination a and the bus is already full he would not in india it's quite popular they stop in various stations and they uh, you know fill the tickets if there are empty seats you think that bus is going to stop anywhere because you're already in the bus you're already in the bus where it is heading towards the lake of fire and satan would never target you because you're already sitting in that bus those who are thinking that they are the strongest time to rethink brother we are not intimidating we are not threatening but then we are telling you giving certain meaningful examples can you believe paul himself was feeblest and he still thinks he's feeblest but that's a different uh, meaning with a different intention he wrote that that's different we will explain that you understand remaining strong in the lord means you don't need any other example other than jesus christ our lord take him as a role model how he was able to overcome what were the secrets behind him we were we have discussed this in the truth about the cross series please go through it all right now you see this is why i said that we are going to be super slow when we read bible we are not going to rush so far you are with me or not i remind you we are here in the business of discussing about know your enemy the evil spirits and the demons and specifically we are talking about overcoming the powers of darknesses and the method we had been speaking was prayers and through the mysteries of god and we are in this current session discussing about fighting against the powers of darknesses through the armor of god and for which you need to first principle number 1 is principle number 1 is you need to remain strong or you need to be strong and we will be discussing about that in a moment why you need to be strong to wear the armor of god you know what is armor let us uh, let us take two steps backward and discuss the basics what is armor you know what is armor armor means it's a breastplate it is made of iron bronze and so many other metals are being mixed and it will be weighing real heavy when david was about to go and fight against the bal like goliath uh, just like the soldiers would be dressed you know king saul ordered you know dress him just like a soldier and you know what bible says david could not move forward <laughs> probably he was about to fall backward i think it was so heavy yes well he had he was strong in faith therefore he didn't need all of that but i use are you really strong like him yeah then you don't need the breastplate you're already strong jesus felt so but then the idea of being strong that's why he is he, you know paul in very meaningfully begins this um this meditation uh, or this paraphrase or this uh, whole scriptural evidence where he thinks that we can fight against the powers of darkness through the armor of god interestingly he begins it with stay strong in the lord and you know as much as you need to be strong enough physically to wear that breastplate which is going to weigh several kgs or pounds and you need to have that kind of energy to wear it and fight against the military soldiers they'll be trained you know uh, on their backs they they will there will be backpacks which will be filled with stones and heavy materials because you have to carry those bombs or machine guns and etc ak47s and what not and they will have to climb up the hill therefore they will be trained that way similarly their body should be strong enough to carry the weapons to fight against the uh, enemy at the same time they also need to have the strength to fight both so as much as physical strength is needed here the bible is talking about the spiritual strength be strong in the lord in the lord this is not about the muscle power not again don't mistake me right uh, yes brothers who are so skinny don't look at me <laughs> with a, with a strange feeling no we are not talking about the physical strength we are talking about the spiritual strength of course my desire for you is you need to be physically strong too yeah no one should be living in sickness that's a lie of the devil oh this is the will of god brother please accept it many pastors were advising their own people in the church this is the will the will of god is not sickness brother will of god is strength healing prosperity 
1 John 3 2. I am not a prosperity preacher, but I believe in prosperity. I believe in prosperity. Why? Because money is going to be right under the, my foot. And I will be on the feet of the Lord worshipping Him. I will never worship money. But I don't hate money. Money is needed. Money is needed. To stay strong in the Lord, money is also one of the criteria. I have seen a lot of people begging for money and yeah, I am waiting for breakthrough from God. What breakthrough from God? Money. Without money, there is no way you can say that I am strong in the Lord. You, you need that, right? For everything, to pay your school fees, your children's school fees, to pay your rentals and to pay your uh, EMIs. You, you just need money. That's one of the important aspects. That's the desire of God to bless us. You need to stay, be strong physically. You need to have that energy to run and earn. You need to be strong. You need to live healthy. That is important. But as much as that is important, how about your spiritual health, brother? Are you grounded and rooted in the principles of God, in the doctrines of God, in the New Testament commands and principles? We had spoken through that in the last session also. The fruits of the Holy Spirit. Every single fruit is a principle. Are you strong? It's necessary for your spiritual health. Are you strong? You need to examine. All right. And in the power of his might. Right? We all know that God is called as almighty. All separate, might, mighty, mighty separate. He is all mighty. All the might is in his hands. Therefore, you have to just focus upon God. Fix your eyes upon God. Fix your eyes on the cross. And that mightiness will descend upon you. The resurrection power of Christ will descend upon you. The, 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 the power of the Holy Spirit, the, you know, the gifts of the Holy Spirit will descend upon you is what it means. But the principle for you to obtain the power and grow mighty like God, you need to be, first of all, steadfast and strong enough in the Lord, grounded and rooted in the principles and doctrines of God the Almighty, our Father. And Lord Jesus, in His name, you need to be grounded and rooted. And whatever teachings He had been talking in the entire New Testament, had you been the doer of the word, that determines whether you are strong in the Lord or not. No, no, I'm only a hearer, just like King Herod. He likes hearing John Baptist. And yeah, once he's tired of hearing, he will say, hey, take him to the den or take him to the dungeon. And then he, his focus will be on yeah, his brother's daughter. <laughs> Can you believe this? We are all, or many people are like that, right? They go to church. They are very holy. They come out of the church. They are unholy. That's not called as being grounded and rooted in the principles of God. You need to be like Jesus. All right. We are done with the first verse. I forgot to look at the time. Time is running real fast. I don't think I'll be able to cover this in the session. But we will see how many other verses we will be able to cover. We'll cover. We will cover one more verse. Next verse. Ephesians chapter 6 and 11. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. I don't think we need to be having any explanation on this verse, but still we need explanation. It's funny, right? What are the wiles of the devil? Wiles means W-I-L-E-S. I have heard this and you might have heard. It is nothing but the, the, the tricks of the devil, right? The tricks. Tricks means he's a, he's a trick. See, you, have you seen magicians? We all know magics, right? I'm not talking about the black magics. Normal ma magic. He will be wearing all that crown, putting all that you know powders, etc. You know what does that show all about? It's about tricks. They will have some card uh, you know, hidden right behind their palm. And they will just do this and the card vanishes. And they will just again you know, circle their hands. Card comes back to the hand. It's all about tricking. It's about tricking and timing. Right? I say it again, tricking and timing or timing and tricking. This is the act of the devil. And he's an expert in that. He's an expert in that. I'm telling you. He knew the timing when to strike you. He knew the timing when to trick you. He knew the timing when to fool you. And if he fails, you know what? He will not go back home with you know tears rolling down his cheeks. No, no, no. Immediately he will again strengthen himself and make ne next attempt. A million times he's ready to trick you, fool you, and he's not tired about the failures. Only we Christians are really tired about our failures. We fast and pray twice, thrice, and we give up. But Satan is not like that. 
shame on us real really i'm telling you this sometimes i feel very shameful upon me when i when i look down on me how many times did i try two three times maybe 10 times but look at devil he is after certain brothers and sisters some of our brothers and sisters who are very strong in the lord they deserve for a big applause but i'll tell you satan is after them until their last breath he is going to be after them are we after god are we after the holy spirit as much as the devil is after us that's what it means okay the wiles of the devil it means we are starting backward top down approach sorry the bottom top approach we are we are starting from the back end right the later uh, half of the verse and we will be climbing upwards right we are first talking about see the best way to read bible i will tell you i never went to bible college but the way how god taught me to learn the bible is when you read a verse you have to split it into categories one verse you can split it into four categories like how we are doing now right wiles of the devil we split it separately stand against the wiles of the devil stand against is another category whole armor of god is another category you understand so when you connect all of these three categories you will be able to get a comprehensive understanding that's why we have been telling again and again that read the bible super slow super slow one kilometer per hour in one hour's time if you can cover one kilometer it's enough you'll be proud of that vehicle that carries you one kilometer distance imagine if you're just one kilometer away from heaven right you don't have to rush that much even if you graze and walk like a tortoise you, you will still reach anyway think like that right heaven is near only we are the ones who are you know making efforts to move away from heaven we are driving the uh, vehicles in the reverse gear and we think that yeah we are rushing towards heaven no we are you're going backward in life sometimes speed in spiritual walk is making you to travel backward you don't have to heaven is at a closer distance and the lord is a step away from us the holy spirit is within us we are very close brothers don't have to rush just take your time okay good now the wiles of the devil we spoke the definition is tricking he's he knows how to trick people right there are many people who have fallen as a prey into the hands of the devil being filled with the spirit of the devil or the demonic spirits they don't i'm not talking about the believers here i'm talking about the non-believers then unbelievers we will come to the believers a little later if you are not the brother and uh, you know uh, sister in the lord or christ uh, you know uh, brethren in the lord uh, let us assume he is an, an unbeliever uh, you have seen that many politicians how they speak lies and they trick people they'd speak for two hour, long hours and they will make them believe you know the lie is the truth and they will get all the votings and they will become the leaders lie of the devil and some business people who come they know ring the bell and they'll say this is the beautiful mission this will work like this that and know uh, and yeah show me a demo he will have a demo piece which works very well and he will be giving you this is a fresh piece don't worry you please anything warranty card is here and all that he will leave this number and all that and <laughs> after that you switch on it doesn't work and you call his number the number also interestingly doesn't work right <laughs> shouldn't you have asked him to show the demo from this live piece shouldn't you have tested whether that mobile number he had given in his card is working or not and dialed right in his presence this is called as watching and praying matthew 26:41 watching and praying because your flesh is weak watch and pray against what the temptations of the devil the wiles of the devil is nothing but the tricks of the devil is nothing but the temptations of the devil you are able to connect these yeah i just gave you a simple example now what it says is now we are going little to the forward right from backward we are going to the forward that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil how to stand against the tricks of the devil by yourself by your might by your by the by the strength of your flesh you think you can stand against the wiles of the devil i'll tell you why you cannot stand against the wiles of the devil because you won't be able to realize or feel the wiles of the devil you won't be able to see the wiles of the devil through your naked eyes physical eyes why because he is an unknown enemy he is an invisible enemy and that's the whole reason why we are stretching this session over and over and over and beyond 
<laughs> Why? Because if he's an invisible enemy, you know the strengths of your enemy. You know his size, shape, height, width, and you will go accordingly, right? And uh, David had that calculation of um, uh, who is that? Goliath. He looked at the size of his forehead. It was too big. Yeah, I, I did some research the other day. And he was very, very uh, sharp in that sling of that stone, right? And he used to beat that. Now he saw that, oh, it's at my advantage. The forehead is so big and I'm able to target that. Why? Because he was able to see visibly, right? Visibly in his naked eyes. The enemy is visible in his naked eyes and he's able to make the calculations, little bit of arithmetics, little bit of techniques, little bit of his skills. He picked the weapon in which he is very fluent and he's able to sling that stone and kill that enemy. You think that is your situation and my situation today? No, absolutely. You have no idea what is in store when you begin in, begin your day. How about the rest of the day is going to be? You have no idea, brothers. And how do you, how do you comprehend uh, this verse? I'm going to, I, I may, I'm, you know, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. How do you stand against in your might, in your, in your in your, in, in, uh, you know, with your, with your, what do you say, with your uh, muscle strength or with your muscle power, how do you stand against the unknown enemy? He can come and attack you from the behind, from the back, from the sides, or he may come right in front of you, head to head collision. You will not know why, because he's invisible. He is an invisible man. That's exactly called as the wiles of the devil, brothers. I'm telling you that the tricks or the treachery or the trickery that he's trying to make uh, through people or through situations and circumstances and yes powers even to send fire from the heaven yes like what happened in job's uh, you know field fire was sent and who gave the permission god but who sent the fire devil he brought the storm when the disciples were tra traveling uh, in the in the ship in the boat and uh, you know jesus will have to come and rebuke it if the storm was from god he will not rebuke he will pray gently. He rebuked the storm, Bible says. Peace be still. He can even control the nature with God's permission, of course. But then I'm telling you, he's powerful. He's already powerful and he's invisible. And are you kidding me that you're telling me that you can stand against the wiles of the devil just because I go to church, just because I carry the Bible? You need to have something more than that. And that is this whole session all about. See, to arrive to the title itself, I took this long. And don't you think this is the right way to read and understand and meditate and discuss about the biblical scriptures and biblical doctrines? I think yes. And I heard an S. Thank you for accepting this. <laughs> Put on the whole armor of God. Whole armor means what? Whole. Why the word whole is used? We are again slicing and dicing. We are again separating the verses. And that's the best way to understand the word of God. Whole armor of God. How about you are given the breastplate of God and you only end up putting the breastplate to the front and not to the back. You cut it into two halves. You cut the breastplate into two halves and you would only wear the front half for some silly reason, sick reasons. What happens? From the behind, the enemy will come with his spear and he will cast it right under your, right, right, right through your back and it will be piercing through your front. Finished. But the breastplate will have to be holistic. It has, the, however the way it was knit and made, you will have to put it through your head and it covers your front and it covers your back. Isn't it? It's like shielding. Bible says in, I like this verse very much. Psalm chapter 5, verse 12. Not sure whether you, have, you might have read it or not. Uh, can we read this together? Psalm chapter 5, verse 12. I'm reading it quickly for you. For you, O Lord, will bless the righteous. With favor, you will surround him as with the shield. You understand? That is Old Testament. You need the favor of God, mercy of God. But you know what is the New Testament? You have the powers, brother, to just fight the battle as how the God Almighty will have to come and fight the battle for sometimes, right? You will become like God. And I'm not trying to say here or selling a false message uh, to you or sending a false message to you that 
uh, when you become like god you don't need god no 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 you will you will become like god you won't become god himself <laughs> you understand you will obtain the powers of god in the old testament that shield was referring to favor we still need his favor i'm not saying the old testament is gone no jesus never came to abolish the old testament he came to fulfill the scriptures of the old testament we still need it right we still need his favor Luke 2:52. Lord Jesus grew with this favor and stature of God and favor of men and God. Bible says you need His favor. That's like the breast shield, like you know, which protects us. But in the New Testament, to fight against the powers of the darknesses, we were, we had been taken to the next level, and that's what we are going to discuss in a while. But we are here explaining about put on the whole armor of God, and what is this whole armor of God? We have to discuss in detail. um and in the coming verses it will be explained uh, why because uh, in, in in you know we will be reading lot of i'm just giving you we have to close this session we are over time already um but here paul will be explaining about many things right he will be talking about uh, you know having girded your waist with truth breastplate of righteousness having shod your feet in the preparation of the gospel of peace shield of faith and uh, you know quench all the uh, sorry um uh, yeah uh, uh, he, he uh, wait yeah and 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 praying always helmet of salvation and sword of the spirit see he would have used almost all the weapons that are used in the olden days battle today only we have missiles tankers helicopters helicopters and you know rockets etc um, and even from satellite they can fire bombs so something like that right but olden days he almost mentioned every weapon and each weapon has a spiritual meaning towards it you understand are you with me or not right it's talking about the belt it's talking about the breastplate it's talking about the um, you know so your feet should be strongly placed on the ground and you, you know it's talking about the helmet and it's talking about the sword so we will have to go through all of this we definitely cannot cover in this session but why we spoke about the armor and connecting it with all the other weapons is armor is one of the important thing the breastplate is one of the important thing why because the enemy if we have to target uh, you with an arrow and bow or with a spear he will be targeting your chest right through the chest you're finished there is no way you can survive that's what happened to king saul that's what happened to david also saul was aiming with a spear to pin him to the wall and where do you think his focus was towards his legs or hands or you know not even head because it, you know you may move like this and you you can escape uh, but then the chest when they aim at it right it's not easy for uh, the aim to miss you 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 know the success rate is more and that's why the breastplate is very important for us to safeguard ourselves our spiritual life our physical life when we fight against the wiles of the devil the invisible powers of devil the invisible you know trickery the invisible tricks of devil and he will be using men as instruments which we described well enough in the first few sessions okay so in the coming session we will continue this and we will try to finish in the next session i hope it was useful to all of you um we will be discussing in the coming session about uh, how the different weapons are being used and you will be very very surprised to hear things like our fight is not against the human beings our fight is not against the blood and flesh and that's what we are going to start with various illustrations and examples in the next session that is chapter 15 okay thank you brothers and sisters stay tuned and god bless you stay safe um, let us close it with a word of prayer heavenly father we want to thank you lord for this beautiful session and we want to thank you for helping us to understand the verses how we can be grounded and rooted and we can be strong in the lord and what makes us strong it's not our mere muscle power but by your strength by your grace by your favor by your leadership and by your guidance lord we will definitely be strong and that's our desire lord and that's only thing which can build that armor around our spiritual life that shield around our spiritual life that veil around our spiritual life therefore the enemy the devil the demonic forces cannot make any effort to enter inside because you have definitely hidden us under the shadow of your wings lord continue to help us to understand your word continue to excel against this
powers of darknesses, overcoming these powers of darknesses and help us to fight the good fight of faith. In Jesus' name we pray and God bless you, my dear brothers and sisters. Stay tuned and we will meet you soon.